What's up everyone, it's Ethan and Unknown Coder. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Build Twitter. Last episode, we went ahead and made it so that we can send a request to take our phone number and update our user row inside the database. Unfortunately, I had to split this episode into two. So this episode, we're gonna go ahead and make it so we can make a post request from the client and actually generate a random code that could be sent over to the email. So let's go ahead and hop into the code. Now we need to figure out how we are going to go ahead and make a kind of like a temporary verification code that we can send to them via email. Back inside of Eclipse here, the first thing that we need to do is go ahead and update the user model or the application user model. This is because we want to add a verification code. We also want to add a Boolean that kind of says, hey, is this user kind of verified or not? So let's go ahead and I'm gonna close out of the user service and auth controller for a second. We'll open it up later when we need it. We'll go back into our models. And inside of our application user at the bottom here below our authorities, we're going to just go ahead and add a private Boolean enabled. So this is also something that we're going to need for our user inside of Spring Security anyway. And then we're also going to have a private, whoops, private long verification. So this is going to be a code that we set whenever we send a request to get a verification code. The only thing is that once we verify, we're going to go ahead and set this to null. So I'm going to say set nullable equal to true. That way we are able to actually set that as nullable. And we're also going to JSON ignore this because whenever we send the, the response back, we don't want the user to see what their verification code is. Now, the only thing that we need to go ahead and do here is inside of the no args, I'm going to go ahead and set enabled equal to false because whenever we first create the account, we don't want the user to be able to use it because it should be disabled. And then at the bottom, I'm going to delete this. I'm going to go ahead and create the rest of the getters and setters that we need. So this is also why I didn't do an all args constructor yet. Um, and I think, yeah, I'll add the two string just so I can see it for now. Uh, but we're going to have to keep regenerating the two string. So now we have updated our model. So let's go ahead and hop back into the authentication controller and make it so that we can update slash send information to get a email. So let's go ahead and go into that. So inside of our authentication controller under our put mapping, I'm going to make another post mapping. So we are going to be sending data to the server. So that's why it's going to be that we're going to be called slash email. And I don't know if I really like this. I'm going to say email slash code, I guess. And then we're going to just have a public response entity of a type string. So this isn't really going to be returning anything, but we're just going to say create email verification code or create email verification. And we'll have an at request body in here. And let me, I can't scroll up, so I might have to move my face cam. I could do this. I don't like how to do this, but we have at create email. We have our at request body. And again, we're going to cheat a little bit. I'm just going to use a linked hash map with a string and a string and call it body. And inside here, we're just going to say user service dot generate email verification of course this doesn't exist we'll have to create this and we're going to just pass in the body dot get username if we wanted to we could um send this in like send the id or something through a path variable or whatever uh, but i like using json bodies and we're going to return a new response entity of type string and this is going to be uh, verification code generated email sent. Of course, the start out is not going to be sent, but we'll go HTTP status dot OK. So now, obviously, this generate email verification does not exist. So we need to go ahead and create that. So go ahead and hit this guy create email verification and here we go the only things i am um this shouldn't be void um do, do, do. oh no yeah it should be void okay just kidding go ahead and copy this guy and i'm going to move it up a little bit so up to i guess right here is fine and now 
all we're going to do is we're going to say first application user user is equal to user repo dot find by username so we're going to make sure that this username can be found so pass in that username like so and then dot or else throw so once again we'll throw a user user does not exist exception if this happens that'll be new so we'll get the user if they don't exist with we'll an exception otherwise we'll say user dot set verification set verification equal to generate verification number this is going to be a method that we need to create inside of here and then we'll say user repo dot save the user so now we need to generate this generate verification number so this will be a private long generate verification number and all we are going to do is essentially the same exact logic except we're just going to return this so it's going to say return long and this time we only want it to be this long so i can't quite tell but yeah there we go so that is our verification number now all we actually have to do to kind of set up this email is go ahead and go back into postman and I'm going to go ahead and make one more new request, not collection, whoopsie daisies. Go ahead and make one more new request. So add request. This is gonna go to slash auth, slash email, slash code. And this is going to be a post mapping to HTTP, colon slash slash, localhost slash auth, slash email, slash code. And again, if we wanted, we could have done something like this where it's like question mark email or whatever, but I like doing things in the body. Send a JSON body with username, colon, and then the username. We don't have the username yet, so we need to go ahead and do that. So first, we'll go ahead and try to auth our user or register our user. So we got our user. And if we go ahead and do this, this username is not going to exist. So we see the user you are looking for doesn't exist. We come back in here and grab our generated username we can go ahead and throw that in here and send and now you see we have a phone number enabled still false we can grab this username once again and post it inside of this one and send you can see a verification code generated email sent we come back into our dbeaver and refresh our user table you'll see that we have an eight digit verification code or it might be seven digits but either way we have like a seven digit verification code we have our username our phone first last email and enabled is false so i believe that's going to be it for this one i hope you guys all enjoyed i don't think i'm going to be able to split this one in two so it might just be a little bit longer one uh, but anyway if you guys enjoyed be sure to like if you didn't enjoy it be sure to hit a thumbs down any and all interaction with the video actually helps me out a lot if you don't want to miss any of these videos make sure that you hit the subscribe button hit the bell icon so you know exactly when they come out if you have any feedback for me or ideas go ahead and leave them in the comment section below either way guys i appreciate everyone thank you all for watching peace out and i'll see you guys in the next episode